In this next section, we're going to talk about liquid or hydraulic locks and how to avoid them. Um, before we do that, let, let me talk for just a second about, um, about hot magnetos. Um, anytime you move the propeller, you need to be certain that the magnetos are off. And you need to be confident that there's no spark getting to the magnetos. Um, the, uh, you know, you may feel like that you're just pulling the engine through to, um, to clear a hydraulic lock or to check to make sure that there's not a hydraulic lock. But if the magnetos are turned on, the engine thinks you're trying to prop it. And, um, and so your intentions and what the engine does may be altogether different. And if you're lucky, you may wind up with just broken bones. So uh, any time that you move that propeller, you need to be sure that the, that the magnetos are, are off and that your switch is working. The, that propeller needs to be treated like a loaded gun. Anytime uh, you have a, a gun, you treat it like it's loaded until you've verified that it's clear. Same way with that, with that propeller. Don't touch it unless you know that, uh, that the magnetos are off and that there's no possibility of a, of a start. All right, liquid locks. What is a liquid lock? Any time that you have a radial engine, you have upper cylinders and you have lower cylinders. And the weakness of the design is that gravity works against you at all times. Gravity is trying to drain the oil that's in the upper part of the engine into the lower part of the engine. And so uh, if oil drains down and, and overflows the sump or gets past the piston rings or past the valve guides and oil begins to fill, the lower combustion chambers. Liquid locks almost always happen either with cylinder number four or with cylinder number five because they're the, the lower cylinders on a, on a W670. And if that fills up the combustion chamber and then adds just a little bit more, and let's say that our piston is, is not at top dead center, but our piston is, is somewhere uh, between top dead center and bottom dead center, and there's more oil in the combustion chamber than volume in the combustion chamber, then what's going to happen is as the crankshaft turns and that piston comes down, it's going to contact that oil. Oil doesn't compress very well. And uh, in fact, it really doesn't compress at all. And so when that, when, that oil, when that piston hits the oil and then continues to turn, something's going to give. And that something is almost always the link rod. The link rod will bend, the link rod will twist, and, um, and you'll, you'll have uh, a serious hydraulic lock with damage. Now that's why it's always very important to pull a radial engine through before you start it. And so uh, uh, people ask me, well, how many blades should I pull through? If you, if you pull the, uh, the crankshaft through so that you've gone two complete revolutions of the crankshaft, then you have gone through the four cycle cycle of each of the, of the cylinders. So you've done the minimum. You've, you've pulled through to make sure that everything, every cylinder is clear and that, uh, that there's not a hydraulic lock anywhere. And, um, you know, we, we talked about four and five being the, the main culprits. You remember um, earlier I talked about that landing craft that, um, that was in uh, Flags of Our Fathers that had the uh, hydraulic lock? That was a, was a lock on number two. It was the first time I'd ever seen a failed link rod and hydraulic lock on number two. And we thought, well, how did that happen? What, what happened there that, you know, gravity is not, not working against you there? Why did, why did number two fail? What it was, it was a hydraulic lock, but it wasn't an oil lock. It was a fuel lock. Their primer was bad, and fuel was flowing past the primer. So fuel had filled up uh, number two cylinder. And when they went to start it, it, the piston came up, hit that fuel, the link rod bent, the engine started, the link rod broke in two and went swinging through there tearing things up. And so um, 
So it's possible to have a liquid lock on any cylinder, uh, and that's why it's a good idea to pull them all through. We're not just we're not just concerned about four and five, though four and five are the ones that are the most likely culprits with an oil uh, hydraulic lock situation. So we're going to pull it through a minimum of two complete revolutions of the crankshaft. Personally, I pull it through six. It uh, it's not that hard. And, uh, and I just feel like that that's, uh, that's cheap insurance for, uh, for not damaging the engine. Now, um, what happens if we do have a hydraulic lock? And we're, we're pulling it through, and see we're at top dead center, number one right now, two, three, and we get down here to four, and we're pulling the propeller through, and suddenly it just stops. It's just like, like hitting a brick wall. Um, what that indicates is that Number four is full of oil, and, uh, and it's trying to compress. Well, if we're pulling it through, we haven't heard anything. We've just discovered that we have a liquid lock. So what do we do? Um, really, the answer is to pull the number one or the number uh, four spark plug and allow that oil to drain out. We have, uh, we have heard of people pulling the crankshaft backwards opposite to the direction of rotation, and uh, they said, hey, that, that cleared the liquid lock. Yes, it does, because what it does is it forces the oil out of the cylinder back into the intake pipe. But you don't want the oil back in the intake pipe, because as soon as the engine starts, all that oil that's in the intake pipe goes back into the combustion chamber, and you've still got the same problem, only now you've got the inertia of a propeller turning, and you've got the possibility of a start with too much oil in there. So don't ever uh, pull the engine uh, or pull a propeller in the opposite direction of rotation in order to clear a liquid lock. That's only a, a temporary fix and, and the, uh, the uh, cure is going to be much worse than the disease once, uh, once it starts turning in the correct direction of rotation. So if we, if we find four has a, has a liquid lock, then, um, then pull four uh, front spark plug, allow the oil to drain out of it. Now, what if we still can hear oil gurgling back there and we know that it's back there in the intake pipe? Uh, there's not a lot of ways to, uh, to clear that. One is to pull the intake pipe, which is, um, uh, is a lot of work. Another is to lift the tail of the airplane and allow the oil that's back there in the intake pipe to drain out. Uh, a third method is to pull the number four and number five uh, spark plugs out and start the engine. That is really, really messy. It, uh, it will clear it, but it blows it all over everywhere and the propeller throws the oil back all over the airplane. It's effective, but it's, it's very, very messy. Um, the fourth method is an intake pipe drain. Uh, intake pipe drains have been approved to go on the number four and number five intake pipes so that you can open up the valves on, these, um, on the intake pipe and allow the oil to, uh, to drain out. That way uh, you don't have to go through the mess, you don't have to worry about the possibility of oil hiding back there that's going to come out as soon as you start the engine. So. Um, so that's a, a good fix for, uh, for oil back in the intake pipes. So to, to kind of summarize that, you want to pull through at least two complete revolutions in order to, uh, to verify that you don't have a liquid lock. If you do, pull the lower spark plugs, clear it, um, and it doesn't hurt a thing to pull it through more times than two. Uh, in fact, it's, it's good insurance to, uh, to not have to worry about a liquid lock. This is a W670 uh, duplex oil pump. This is the one that, um, that both scavenges and, uh, and provides pressure for the engine. And uh, if you have, we'll, we'll turn it over here, uh, and you can see that, that uh, we have a couple of valves here. This valve is the oil pressure relief valve. So that's the one that, uh, uh, that is going to set the oil pressure in the engine by this adjusting screw here. This valve is, uh, is the oil check valve, and this valve has a really weak little spring inside of it, and that valve is designed to keep oil from draining back from the, um, the aircraft oil tank back into the engine while the engine is not running. 
Now, if, if just the smallest piece of gasket material gets between that valve and its seat, it will allow the uh, engine to drain back or the oil tank to drain back into the engine and um, and that will will flood those lower cylinders and contribute to a uh, to a liquid lock we often get calls from customers that are having problems with the oil tank draining and uh, some of them have even gone so far as to put an oil tank shut off which um, is um, is sometimes kind of a dangerous idea because if you if you forget to uh, turn the oil back on again and go flying, um, the the results will be disastrous. Uh, we got an engine in our shop that um, that only had about a hundred hours on it that someone had gone flying uh, with the oil shut off and it lasted about 10 minutes into the flight before it blew up. So uh, if this little check valve is doing its job, you shouldn't need an oil shut off. Uh, so it could be a piece of trash between the, the valve and the seat or it could be that this little valve is not seating. But if your engine is, uh, is filling up with oil and you go out to fly and find that uh, you know that there were four gallons in there and there's only one gallon on the dipstick, probably this little valve is, uh, is leaking past. And unfortunately, there's not a good way to, to clean that or repair it other than by pulling the pump off and disassembling it.